area. Michael Vick, I know you're very familiar with the history and the legacy of Dianne Feinstein. Well, Adrian, you're right, and it's a sad day on Capitol Hill, though, if we're being honest, not completely unexpected, given all of the health struggles that she's had over the past year. Uh, but let's start with that career of, of DiFi, as she's affectionately known here in Washington, inside the Beltway and in California. Uh, came in the year of the woman, same year Bill Clinton was elected, 1992, uh, went on to chair the Judiciary Committee, very influential, of course, in Supreme Court battles throughout the years, including uh, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, uh, Gorsuch, uh, some of President Trump's nominees as well, uh, leading the Democratic opposition to those. And, of course, we know that the Kavanaugh hearings got quite contentious. Uh, DiFi on the forefront of that. Uh, but before that, chairman of the Intelligence Committee, and before that, even rising through the ranks of San Francisco politics. And if you know anything about California politics, Adrian, uh, you know that San Francisco and the Bay Area uh, sort of counterintuitively runs California politics, has had the lead in California politics, uh, much to the consternation of many in Southern California and elsewhere in the state. And that's been going on for generations. Uh, she rose to the top under those tragic circumstances, the assassination of Harvey Milk uh, on the city council, the assassination of Mayor Moscone on the San Francisco City Council. Uh, she become, became mayor under those circumstances, received uh, notoriety and praise for the way she ran the city, uh, had run unsuccessfully for Congress uh, to come to Washington in the past, uh, but finally triumphed in 1992. She leaves behind a legacy. You know, bipartisanship is sort of something that has gone by the wayside here over the course of the last decade or even longer. Uh, but today, an interesting moment in a, in a committee in the House of Representatives that was meeting at this moment just a few moments ago, uh, run by very hardcore conservative Republicans. It's called the House Rules Committee, and they were meeting to talk about legislation that's going to be on the floor of the House today. A moment of silence. Uh, and that included many, again, of the most conservative members of the House of Representatives, the so-called Freedom Caucus. Uh, there as well. So respect for a, uh, one of their own here in Congress, regardless of the fact that she's known as uh, more or less somebody on the left, a uh, champion of liberal causes. We should mention uh, the assault weapons ban, one of her signature achievements in her view and Democrats view uh, in the, in the mid nineties. She led the charge on that as well as much of the gun legislation uh, that went, that uh, passed in the nineties uh, expired and the unsuccessful of uh, fight to revive it over the course of the last several years. So a giant of the Senate, no question about it, came here since 19, uh, came here in 1992, had served as power, uh, chairman of the most powerful committees in, in the United States Senate, uh, the passing that everybody here on Capitol Hill is going to be mourning over the course of this day and this weekend. Yeah. Adrian. And Vic, I know, you know, when you say that everybody's going to be mourning, you yourself have spent, so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm safe in saying decades, you know, reporting on Capitol Hill and in D.C. Did you ever have any interactions with her or, or, or special moments that are kind of top of mind for you that, well, that you'll I, never forget with the senator? Uh, well, sure. As a reporter, and I did spend 12 years in the halls of Congress every day as a reporter, um, most of my interaction with her had to do with those, those high-profile cases on the Supreme Court. You know, if you've ever been in the Capitol, uh, when it's really cranking both the House and the Senate, very active, there are dozens, I would say, perhaps even hundreds of reporters in the halls, and we're following the Congress people around, we're following the senators around, we're chasing them, we're looking for comments. Uh, I remember during the, uh, the fight over the revival of the assault weapons ban, oh, it was about 10 years ago. Uh, we saw her in a hallway, or at least I saw her in a hallway with uh, a colleague of mine, uh, and we asked whether or not it was going to go anywhere. This is after the Sandy Hook shootings. Uh, we thought perhaps that uh, this was the moment that Dianne Feinstein would triumph and have that assault weapons ban, which, remember, had expired, uh, have it revived. Uh, and she told us that the writing was on the wall. It simply was not going to happen, and that was sort of a big breaking news of the moment. Uh, so uh, there are little moments like that that reporters interact with members of Congress, absolutely. Uh, but more, more than that, you could see the reverence uh, that many members of Congress, particularly those in the Senate, have for one of their own. You know, the Senate, again, for all of the partisanship that has overtaken Washington, the Senate really wasn't that was sort of the last holdout. The House has always been more or less a partisan institution. Uh, the, the Senate was more of a club. Uh, people say that pejoratively, but uh, for, in some sense, people revere that. You know, there's this one little tradition in the Senate on Thursdays in the summer. Uh, they call it Seersucker Thursday. This sounds utterly trivial. It's probably one of the things that people hate about Washington. But uh, several, uh, maybe a dozen or 20 senators wore, wore seersucker suits on Thursday 
and that was something that she always did. Oh. Well, thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.